Greetings to you. You are welcome to this video where I'm going to introduce to you the concept of exact differential equation. So in this video, I will show you uh, uh, what we actually mean by exact differential equation. When do we say uh, a particular differential equation is exact? So I will show you an example and I will also introduce to you the method, the approach we can use to solve any differential equation. Uh, I'm talking about first order that is uh, exact. So I will solve one example in this video and I believe at the end of this video, you'll be able to uh, solve first order exact differential equation. So let us consider uh, a simple differential equation in form of um, y dx plus x dy is equals to zero. That is our equation one. If you look at this simple equation, you will notice that is indeed a first order. But one thing that is special about it is that um, the problem is actually separable. This is true because if you rearrange very well, you will see that we can easily write this expression as x dy and is equals to minus y dx. I intentionally put this so that you can see that it can be in terms of dy and dx separately. And what do we get from here is that um, we can divide both sides by y and at the same time, uh, after that, we can now divide both sides by x. Then we now see this expression. And you can see clearly now that, is that uh, we've been able to separate the variables clearly in this case. Next thing we're going to do now is to integrate both sides. Because once we can separate the variables, then it means that we can indeed integrate both sides. If we integrate the y over y, we get ln y. If we integrate the x over x, we get ln x then the constant of integration will be added to the time to the part of x. But one thing about the property of uh, ln is that uh, the minus that we are having multiplying ln x is going to actually go to the power to give us ln x raised to the power minus 1 then plus the constant of integration. So the next thing we are going to do now is that um, we need to replace x and c. c is a constant and definitely ln a is also what's constant so we can replace um, our constant to be ln a so that this one will help us to easily find the exponential of both sides we can also see clearly now that um, we have ln x inverse plus ln of a so finding the exponential of both sides we now say that we have um, y to be x inverse of a because exponential will take care of ln and ln x inverse plus ln a will give us multiplication we give us sine inv x inverse over x inverse multiplied by what multiplied by a so the next thing now is that we can now see that from here we can actually have our y times x to be equal to a. Now one thing we can notice from here is that um, from equation 1 is the problem, we'll solve it to have our equation 2. Then the solution we have here is in terms of fx, y is equal to a, which means that um, the solution y of x, which is in terms of fx, y is indeed a constant which is like a family of cough. There is something very important that we've just discovered. And before we proceed, let me actually call your attention to it again. You know, we have equation one, which is the first order. And then we actually solve that one and we obtain equation two. And one thing we can notice from this equation two is that um, there is a particular function fx, y that is equivalent to constant A. And that constant A is the constant of integration. Now, which means that if we are saying that fx, y is a constant, then we should note that let's replace z with that fx, y. And z here is a function depending on two variables x and y. Now, if that is the case, then we can notice that the function is continuous and is of first partial derivative in a region R of the xy plane, which means that we can actually obtain the total differential. And what is the total differential now? Is the z is equal to partial derivative of f with respect to x multiplied by dx plus partial derivative of f with respect to y dy. So, which means that if that is the case now, uh, we can have the z to be that expression. But remember, if our z is equal to fx, y, and that is actually equals to constant, 
If we differentiate constant, what do we have? We have zero. So we cannot say that is zero is equals to the f partial f partial x dx plus partial f partial y dy. Now, what is the one thing we should discover from here is that um, we are trying to notice that um, even if we have the solution and the solution is in terms of a function, if we go extra mile to look for the total differential, we will not notice that um, the total differential will not be zero. The z will be zero. Is equal to that expression. So, and why do we have it to be zero? Because if the solution fx comma y is a constant and you differentiate a constant, you have zero. And that means that zero is equivalent to that. Let's keep that interpretation. We shall use it very soon. Now, there is something very important that we've just discovered. Then let me call your attention to it. You know, in the first case, we solved the problem y dx plus x dy is equal to zero. And what happened? We noticed that the expression is equal to zero. And if you look at that problem, when we separated the variables and we obtained the solution, we notice that y of x equals to a. And in that case, if you find the total differential, we notice that is zero is equals to partial f partial x dx plus partial f partial y dy. So if that is the case, that means that um, the first expression is actually equal to the second because both of them are equals to zero. What am I trying to say? I'm saying that if y dx plus x dy is equal to zero, and then the total differential is also equal to zero, that means that both of them are the same. That is what we've just discovered. Now, look at the screen now. You will notice the problem now. Instead of that one, we cannot write in terms of um, mx, y dx plus nx, y dy. Then it's equal to the total differential. What does that mean? It now means that... Um, uh mx comma y is equal to partial f partial x and what about n nx comma y is equal to partial f partial y it's very simple just look at it uh, the coefficient of the s they are the same then the coefficient of the y they are the same that is what we are talking about so the next thing we're going to do now is that let's just try to differentiate both sides the first term we differentiate it with respect to y the second one we differentiate it partially with respect to what with respect to x so what does that mean? It now means that um, partial m partial y is equals to the second derivative of f with respect to y and x. Now, if you look at the second one again, you know we are having partial n partial x, which is the second derivative of f with respect to x and y. You will now see clearly now that partial m partial y is equals to partial n partial x. They are the same thing. Look at it very well. They are the same thing and hmm, that one is actually telling us something what is telling us is that um, mx comma y dx plus nx comma y dy is actually exact because if the second derivative of the solution f is the same then it means that is only possible even only if the differential equation first order is indeed exact so, we can now conclude that um, the quality of the missed partials is a consequence of the continuity of the first partial derivative of mx, y and nx, y. What I'm trying to say now is that um, since the second derivative of the function fx, y is the same, it means that um, the m dy is equal to the n dx. And if that is the case, it means that mx comma y dx plus nx comma y dy is indeed exact ordinary d now we have obtained something very important then the next thing is for us to to divine uh exact differential equation or first order ordinary differential equation so we can as you can see on the screen now a differential expression which is in terms of mx comma y dx plus nx comma y dy we can say such a differential equation is exact in a particular region of r you know of xy plane if it corresponds to the differential of some function fs comma y what we are saying in other words is that um, if we differentiate the multiplier of the x which is m with respect to y we keep it we differentiate n with respect to x if they are the same thing then it means that the differential equation is what is exact because in the real sense 
the second derivative of the solution fx, which is the solution of that problem, is now the same. And if the second derivative of that function is the same with respect to the derivative of m with respect to y equals to n with respect to x, that means that that differential equation we are talking about is what is exact. So let's consider this example. We are giving x squared y3 dx plus x3 y squared dy is equal to 0. We want to check if the differential equation is indeed exact. From here, what is my m? My m is what is x squared y raised to power 3 because it's the multiplier of the x. Then what is my n? My n is n raised to power 3 then y squared because that is the multiplier of what? Of the y. So let's differentiate m with respect to y. Don't forget this time we're talking about partial derivative. You know, partial derivative, we keep the other variable constant. So in this case now, we are looking for partial m, partial y. Meanwhile, we are going to treat x as a constant. Okay? So we are going to treat x as a constant. So in this case now, we now have 3, we come down. Then 3 minus 1, we give me 2. That's why I have y squared. Now, what about partial n, partial x? Then we give me uh, 3x squared, then y squared. Now, you will now see clearly now that in this case, partial m, partial y is equal to partial n, partial x which means that the differential equation is indeed exact there is a condition that is very important about the multiplier of the x and the y that we are talking about number one m x comma y n x comma y they are functions which must be continuous and if the function is continuous remember that that statement is not complete we can only say a function is continuous at a point. That is why we need to emphasize on the domain. You will notice that uh, I've mentioned something I said. I said for the function is sec is a partial derivative in x y plane. That x y plane, I'm using that statement to be able to give us a kind of domain in which the function is continuous. So that is very important. Now, if you look at the screen now, I'm trying to present to you a criterion for an exact differential. Now, mx comma y and ns comma y, they must be a continuous function. And even if it's a continuous function, what about the derivative? The first derivative must also be a continuous function. That's why I say that mx comma y and ns comma y, they must be continuous and they must have a continuous first partial derivative in a rectangular domain. So in this domain now, of course, I need to mention the domain whereby the function is continuous. So that's why you are saying now that x is bounded between a and b. Meanwhile, y is also bounded between what c and d. That is the region. We only use a, b, c, d to give us a perfect domain whereby the function is continuous. You know, we can't just say a function is continuous anywhere. We must be specific. So now, if that is the case now, then the necessary and sufficient condition now is that um, the differential equation is exact if partial m partial y is equal to partial n partial x which is something i've explained to you because that is the only condition where the second derivative of f with respect to y and x they are equal that means that um, the solution which we've i've shown to you before that is a constant and i said if the form f x or y is solution is a constant and you find the total differential you know in that case we see that um, you will have zero and what we are not trying to say is that um, the changes in the solution fx comma y in the domain if we are emphasizing on m is the same thing as that of n so and that is only possible if the differential equation is what is indeed exact so let's consider this example in fact i will indeed put everything on the screen so that we can all see the procedure we are asked to solve the we are asked to check if the differential equation on the screen is exact and if it indeed is exact we should obtain the solution and it's very very simple now in this case now we have the problem the question is this what is my mx comma y don't forget mx comma y is the multiplier of dx so that is what 2xy then what is ns comma y that is the multiplier of, of dy and what is that that is x squared minus one then the next thing is for us to check if it's exact and the problem is exact if partial m partial y is equal to partial n partial x 
and in this case if you differentiate m with respect to y you have 2x if you differentiate n with respect to x you will also see that is equals to 2x then what does that mean it means that the differential equation is what is indeed exact and if it is exact how do we solve it now let's proceed now and proceed with the solution it's very simple is either you start with the first term which is partial f partial x or you start with partial f partial y but in this case let me start with partial f partial x so if i'm starting for that then let me make the partial f the subject so i can say partial f is equals to 2xy the partial x so what is the next thing i will integrate both sides by the time i integrate both sides i will have the last expression now the last thing is that um, from that by the time we integrate both sides we now say that uh, fx comma y is indeed x squared y then plus g of y why do i have g of y you know i'm integrating with respect to x and when you are integrate when you are integrating a function depending on two variables you know you assume that y is a constant and if y is a constant then it means that the constant of integration will be a function depending on what you fix to be a constant you know in this case i integrated with respect to x and i fixed y that is why i said that the constant will be g of y now if that is the case now the next thing we're going to do now is that we now find the we differentiate both sides with respect to y so that one we if we differentiate x squared y with respect to y that will give you x squared then if you differentiate g you have g of y then we now equate the answer to the same n of x that we are very familiar with so that is how we have nx comma nx comma y to be equal to that so in this case now even if you remember very well you know that partial f partial y is equal to what is equal to n do you remember that exactly so that's what we're trying to do now because don't forget that um partial f partial s is equal to m then partial f partial y is equal to what is equal to n that is why in this piece now we need to differentiate f with respect to y then if we do that we now have partial f partial y which is equals to n s comma y so that's how we obtain it so from here now we cannot make our partial g partial uh, y the subject of formula so that will give me minus one so if you integrate both sides with respect to y you now say that um, g of y is equals to what minus y so you put minus y back to the function f s comma y then if that is the case then we can now say that the solution is what is x squared y minus y is equals to what constant say remember the example i saw to you that day we said that the function f s comma y which is the solution of exact is indeed what a constant is indeed a constant so that's how we obtain that thank you very much for watching thank you for watching